So, um, I will speak about uh, the sarcoma, some solid tumors we are working on. And, and my first slide is just to illustrate the genetic complexity of, uh, of, of those tumors. And so this is a circus plot showing the different chromosome translocation that are oncogenic in, 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 in sarcoma. So it's a bit like in leukemia, you have many, many specific translocations, which usually are very specific for a sarcoma uh, subtype. And I, I would say almost every week or every two weeks, a new translocation is characterized thanks to uh, RNA-seq uh, data in, in, in sarcoma. And until now, uh, very few of those translocations uh, are a real target for, for therapy. And I only illustrate here three of them that can be targeted by uh, anti-kinase uh, uh, inhibitors. And uh, one of the first translocations that, that was uh, cloned in, uh, in uh, uh, sarcoma uh, was done 30 years ago. I was a young uh, PhD student at the time. I'm not PhD student anymore, but still young. <laughs> uh, and this is a Ewing sarcoma, so which is mostly a, a bone tumor that can involve uh, any any bone in the uh, in the organism, which is mostly observed in teenagers. So the median age is uh, 15 years of of, of age. And uh, in uh, localized disease, it is, the treatment is usually quite efficient with 75% five-year survival in those tumors. <laughs> but uh, uh, as soon as you have a metastasis or a relapse, as shown on the slide, the prognosis is, is, is really very poor. And <laughs> this is a, 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 a tumor that is characterized by a chromosome translocation, which was initially identified by two French scientists, Alain Orias and uh, Claude Turcarel. And I had the, the privilege somehow to, to uh, uh, characterize this translocation 30 years ago and show that it involves two genes that I will speak about, which are EWS, also called EWSR1. So Sorry for the confusion. And the other one is a fly one, and its family member. And some, some outline of my presentation on, on, on this. So I would first speak about the genetic alteration, then about genetic susceptibility to Ewing sarcoma, which is quite intriguing and, and, and interesting. The cell of origin of, of, of this and come to cell plasticity and, and the, the theme of uh, this session on uh, heterogeneity. And uh, I will end with uh, some uh, new data that we have on uh, genes that are uh, induced by EWS fly and that may be interesting for <coughs> immunotherapy. So, as I said, the, the, the main genetic alteration, which is observed in all Ewing sarcoma, is a translocation between EWS and usually FLY1, but it can be also some other member of the ETS family, um, like ERG or ETV and, 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 and so on. But the main one is EWS FLY, so I will mostly speak about EWS FLY. This translocation is clearly oncogenic, and this was shown very quickly after the, the cloning of the translocation, that if you express this in, in non-malignant uh, fibroblasts, you transform them in, into, uh, into transformed cells with uh, tumors in, in, in nude mines. <laughs> in terms of genetic alteration, so the translocation is always present, and Apart from this, the genome is relatively quiet. Uh, very few uh, additional abnormalities, a few copy number changes, which involve usually wall uh, chromosome arms, and three secondary mutations uh, can be observed. One is uh, the uh, cohesin member uh, stack 2 we'll speak a bit about uh, later on. The other one is P53, and the third one is CDK in 2A deletions. But apart from those three, very few uh, uh, additional genetic abnormalities. So the EWS fly, EWS or EWSR1, 
is a RNA binding protein with a C terminal domain, which, is, which includes the RNA recognition motif. The precise function of EWS is not yet very clear. It's a ubiquitous protein expressed in any, uh, every tissue. It has been involved in splicing. It has been involved in its transcription uh, initiation, in transcription elongation, in microRNA biology. But its precise role in terms of mechanism is not clearly uh, understood yet. And the N-terminal part of uh, uh, EWS is what is called intrinsically disordered domain or prion-like uh, domain or low-complexity domain. So it's a domain composed of a few amino acids forming some kind of repeated motif along this uh, N-terminal part without any structure in terms of beta sheet or alpha chains. So unstructured uh, domain, and I will speak a bit about th this uh, later. Uh, FLY1 is its DNA binding uh, domain, transcription factor uh, with a DNA binding domain on the CETER and a regulation domain on, on the uh, N-terminus. And as a result of the translocation, what you have is this low complexity domain of EWS, which is fused to the DNA binding domain of, uh, of uh, uh, FLY1. So this kind of low complexity domain are uh, a matter of a lot of investigation uh, nowadays. It is something that is well known in the physics, in physics, more, more recent in, in biology. The, 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 the principle of, of this kind of domain is that they can induce what is called liquid-liquid phase separation, meaning that when you increase the concentration of the domain, at some point there is a tendency to, to aggregate and uh, to form droplets. In, 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 uh, in, in, the, in the liquid. And EWS is this kind of, uh, as this kind of domain. That if you increase, at some point, you favor homotypic and heterotypic interaction, and you have this kind of uh, uh, droplets. And, and as you will see, this is important probably for the biology of what EWS fly is doing. EWS fly can bind two types of motif. One is the ETS family member motif, so a single GGA with a few specific amino, um, nucleotides on, on each side. The, the idea is that EWS fly is able to bind to this kind of uh, uh, motif and s somehow compete with normal ETS member, wild type ETS member in, in the cells. So this is one of the reprogramming that EWS fly is doing just in, to, to impeach, to impair the function of wild type ETS in, in, the, in the protein. The second motif is much more specific for EWS fly. No wild type ETS family members can bind to this. Only EWS fly is able to do this. And these are repeated GGA forming what is called microsatellite uh, uh, sequences. And the more GGA you have, the more EWS fly is able to bind to it until a maximum of something like 20 uh, GGAA uh, repeats. And <clears throat> to my knowledge, this is the only protein that is able to bind to, to, to this. Um, <laughs> When we uh, uh, inhibit EWS fly expression in human cells, as uh, here with a DOCS inducible uh, system where, where you can monitor uh, uh, EWS fly expression depending on, on, on DOCS, you see that you, these are only GGA repeats, and you see that you completely lose the binding and uh, uh, upon washing of the docks, re-expression of EWS fly, you, you, you recapitulate the, the, the binding. And in the meantime, where you lose this binding of EWS fly, you lose ATAXEC uh, signal, so you lose open uh, chromatin, you lose uh, histone acti activation mark like uh, K27-acetylated and uh, 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 K4-methyl-1. So the, the, um, the uh, model that uh, we have now for the function of EWS fly is that in the parental cell, before the occurrence of the translocation, those kind of GGA repeats are not bound by any known uh, factor, they are quite silent. And uh, upon EWS fly, EWS fly can bind to this motif 
many uh, different EWS fly protein can bind to these different GGA motifs, which induce this liquid liquid phase transition mechanisms, I told you, because this is a local increase in the concentration of the uh, EWS low complexity domain. And uh, this liquid liquid phase transition enable the recruitment of uh, the transcription uh, machinery, the chromatin remodeling uh, machinery, and hence transform this silent GGA repeat into bona fide enhancer. And this is a major way through which EWS fly remodel, reprogram the cells, is through the creation within the cells of thousands of new enhancer at this uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, of position. And uh, you see that uh, this, this binding of EWS uh, to this uh, uh, microsatellite sequence creates this transcriptional hubs, or what we think are transcriptional hubs, where there is active transcription associated with EWS fly uh, binding. And uh, as uh, this is a complete neomorphic uh, 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 property of EWS fly, as no, none of the uh, wild type ETS uh, can uh, promote this. So EWS fly create those new answer, and this is just a, a representation here where you have uh, the GGA repeat here, EWS fly binding, and you have uh, K4 methyl 1 uh, binding at this level, K27 acetyl binding uh, at this uh, level, so all, all proper, up and chromatin, all, all properties of, uh, 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 of an answer, and if you inhibit EWS fly, you lose completely those marks. And, and through uh, this uh, uh, element, EWS fly is, uh, can regulate uh, in, in a completely abnormal way uh, a plethora of cellular processes. Probably more than a thousand genes in the EWS fly uh, cells are directly regulated by EWS fly through this neo enhancer uh, properties. And this uh, has been quite clearly investigated now, and we were interested by uh, some particular aspect of, uh, of Ewing sarcoma, is that Ewing sarcoma, and this is not for a long time, and the first one to describe this was Joe Fromeni, the same guy uh, we heard about this morning of uh, the, the Lee Fromeni syndrome, and he described that Ewing sarcoma is almost only observed in population of European descent. It is very rare in population of uh, African descent and a bit intermediary in, in uh, Asian uh, descent. And this has been well investigated recently by Logan uh, Spector and, and Judge uh, Schiffman looking at the epidemiology of Ewing sarcoma worldwide. And this is interesting in the US, so in the same environment where, where you look at uh, European descent and Afro-American descent in the, in the US population, you see that you have approximately 10 times uh, more Ewing sarcoma in the population of European descent as compared to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Afro-American uh, descent. And this led us uh, 10 years ago, something like this, to, to begin a, a genome-wide association study because there is very few Ewing sarcoma in families, so it's not a strong predisposition, but this, the epidemiological profile strongly suggests that there is some genetic factor predisposing to Ewing sarcoma. And, and we did a GWAS, so just for those who do, do, may not know what, what is a GWAS, what, what you do is you, you use hundreds of thousands of SNP across the whole genome, and you compare the frequency of those SNP in the Ewing sarcoma population as compared to a match non-Ewing uh, uh, population. And you look, are, are there differences in the frequency of those SNP? And this leads to what, what is called a Manhattan plot, shown here, where uh, you have the frequency of uh, each uh, SNP, uh, shown, shown here, and you see that in some loci, the frequency is highly different between uh, uh, Ewing sarcoma patient and non-Ewing sarcoma patient, leading to the suggestion that in this at this level, there is something different in the genome of Ewing sarcoma patient and non-Ewing uh, 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 patients. 
And as you see, these are haplotypes that you uh, detect by this, and for any uh, specific uh, uh, loci, you have many, many different SNPs that are in liquid, in liquid uh, disequilibrium and that show the same uh, kind of signal. So we were interested first by, by this one, which is very clear. You see the, the, the p-value are 10 to the minus 15 or so, so very, uh, very clear uh, uh, p-values. And at this level, we found that there is a very important gene in Ewing sarcoma, which is EGR2. Uh, so it's also a transcription factor. And as shown here, I will go quickly on this, but this, these are uh, 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 human Ewing sarcoma cells in which we have a dox-inducible inhibition of EGR2. And uh, these are the, the cells uh, growing uh, without dox. And you see that as, as soon as we had dox, in, in the drinking water of the, of the mice, the tumors completely uh, disappear. So showing that the expression of EGR2 is absolutely required for, for uh, Ewing sarcoma. And Thomas Grunwald, who has a, a postdoc in the lab uh, at this time, uh, dig a lot on, on this. And uh, he, he found a quite interesting story about this microsatellite. You saw here that you have a GGA repeat. At this level, you have something like 11 repeats here and a GGAT, and then uh, again a five or six uh, GGA. And you could characterize the susceptibility allele. And what happened in the susceptibility allele is that you just have a change, a SNP, changing a T into an A here, which leads to a much uh, uh, longer stretch of GGA repeats. And EWS fly binds much more to this allele than to this one, activates EGR2 much more in this situation than in, in the GGAT uh, situation. So the idea is that EWS fly, this susceptibility is just something which potentiates somehow the effect of EWS fly. So once you have EWS fly, on this long stretch, it is more efficient on activating this essential uh, gene in Ewing sarcoma, which is EGR2. And we have now a dig, uh, dug into the other loci. And interestingly, at all of this uh, loci, at three uh, uh, at least of this loci that we could investigate, we find this kind of, of polymorphism of uh, microsatellite sequences. So we don't know if this explains the epidemiological profile I told you between uh, uh, African and, and, and European uh, descent, but these are clearly polymorphism that potentiate EWS fly effect and potentially transforming uh, effect. One of the, the, the questions for, for long in Ewing sarcoma has been, what is the cell of origin? And, and one of the uh, important uh, observation uh, quite soon uh, after the, the characterization of this, was that if you inhibit EWS fly, you, you, you completely change the cytoskeleton of the cells. And you see these are Ewing cells, so quite disorganized uh, actin cytoskeleton. And when you inhibit EWS fly, you have this kind of much more organized uh, 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 cytoskeleton. And this led to, to the idea that if you inhibit AWS fly, potentially the cells can go back somehow to the initial uh, state of the cell of origin. And this kind of uh, profile is, is, is what is observed is meso in mesenchymal cells. And uh, a few years ago, together with uh, Erika Brunet in, in Hôpital Necker, from the Imagine Institute in, in Necker, what, what we did is to use mesenchymal stem cells, but mesenchymal stem cells from Ewing patients, just to be sure that then EWS fly can have its full activity. And then CRISPR, uh, the, the translocation in, in this, adding also the, the few uh, secondary mutations to help potentially the, trans, the, the transformation, so stack 2 mutation, P53 and, and CDK and do A. And using this, uh, we could fully recapitulate uh, the Ewing sarcoma, both in terms of reprogramming 
the, uh, the, the, the genome, the uh, epigenome, as shown here. If, if you look at binding of EWS fly, so these are the Ewing sarcoma here. These are the mesenchymal stem cells. So obviously no EWS fly. You have a, a few uh, dots which are linked to fly one, wild type fly one on single GGA can, can bind here. And you see that when, when you have in, induced a fusion, you have a pattern which is very similar to this. And we can look at some specific targets and the, 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 the fully recapitulate the, the profile and also the phenotype of the cells in mice. So those cells are, uh, are tumorigenic when injected into nude mice. And the phenotype that we observed in mice is very similar to uh, Ewing sarcoma. So the, 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 the real the model presently is that Ewing sarcoma arise from some kind of mesenchymal stem cells. But mesenchymal stem cells, as probably many of you may know, it's still a kind of fuzzy concept and probably something which is a bit heterogeneous. So there is still precision to have on exactly what kind uh, of mesenchymal stem cell in the, is involved and at which uh, uh, stage. But this is to the current model that we have, is that the, parent, the, the cell of origin is the mesenchymal stem cells. In Ewing sarcoma, there are some precise polymorphism that help EWS fly action, and that upon uh, uh, EWS fly, those cells are, are fully transformed. And then, in line with what I show you with the cytoskeleton, we, we made also another observation, which is shown in, in, the, in this film. So what you have here is two different uh, Ewing cells that are grown into uh, nodules in, 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 in vitro. And, and uh, on the top, you have minus docs, and on the bottom, you have plus docs. So, and on the bottom, you inhibit EWS fly has a low expression pattern. And you will see a very different uh, comportment of those cells. And see that on the bottom, upon EWS fly inhibition, you have cells that migrate like, uh, like L. And so this led us to the hypothesis that maybe this is something that may happen in vivo, also in cells, is that if you have different activity of EWS fly from one cell to the other, then cells may have quite a large heterogeneity with cells with a low EWS fly activity being more mesenchymal and more prone to, to migrate. And, and this was uh, uh, quite well uh, uh, demonstrated by a single cell analysis uh, a few years ago. Here you have Ewing cells. And this ICEWS I showed you is an EWS fly signature. So the target gene of EWS fly, and the, this, this is a kind of indirect measure of the activity of EWS fly. And as you uh, can see here in single cells, it's quite heterogeneous. You have cells with a high activity and cells with a much lower uh, EWS fly activity. And when you plot on this, some signature of cell cycle like G2M or G1S, you can see that the cells that are in G2M, so that are in red here in this, uh, in this loop, these this are not the cells that have the highest EWS fly uh, activity. I will come to this in, the, in, in a moment. And when, when you look at some other uh, signature, you see that the cells with the high EWS fly have, have a high Oxfos uh, signature. And the cell with a low EWS fly mostly have a, ca a, a glucose catabolic uh, signature and activation of IF1 target, some sign of uh, hypoxia. And this is something Im important in the function uh, of uh, EWS. So if here you plot on the x-axis, this is the activity of EWS fly. Uh, measured by this uh, ICEWS signature I showed you. And on the y-axis, you have uh, the uh, cell cycle signature. You see that cells that are cycling are only in a kind of window of EWS fly activity. When EWS fly activity is lower than that, cells are not proliferating. They are mostly mesenchymal, have mesenchymal features. And also, if cells have a, a, a EWS fly signature higher than this window, also cells are not pr proliferating. So meaning that 
you need some uh, uh, tight regulation of EWS fly activity for cells and then tumors to be able to, to grow. And uh, we, we could uh, pursue on this and, and show that if we isolate EWS fly low cells, grow them in culture or inject them in the animal, they are able to revert and to become EWS fly I uh, again and, and grow and reciprocally. So this is a plastic phenomenon where cells can oscillate between EWS fly I or EWS fly low uh, activity, which lead to so a model we have uh, for, for cell plasticity in dissemination is that in the primary uh, tumors, you have a, a, var a variability of EWS fly uh, activity shown by this uh, uh, red uh, 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 heterogeneity uh, somehow. Some cells uh, can recover some properties of their mesenchymal origin, are able to have a cell matrix attachment, uh, increased mesenchymal fixture, low proliferation, but able to migrate, potentially to invade surrounding tissues, lead to metastasis, and then revert their phenotype for some reason that we are, we are working on, but don't know uh, presently, and then the cell may, 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 grow, uh, may grow again. So meaning that one of the key processes we, we believe in Ewing sarcoma is somehow a two-step process. One is the process where EWS fly activity is low, cells recover mesenchymal features, and the second is that uh, EWS fly uh, activity increases again, and this leads to, 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 to the tumor. So this is so the model to increase, to, to improve somehow the, the, the model that we have. So we have this plasticity between EWS fly and EWS fly low. What are the reasons for this plasticity is really a matter of, uh, of uh, uh, strong uh, work in my lab and in, in other lab. Is it just something which is stochastic in the activity. We know that hypoxia, that can be very important, lead to uh, 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 first acute hypoxia, you will have an increase of EWS fly, and a, a chronic hypoxia, you will have a strong decrease of EWS fly. So hypoxic area in the tumor may be very important to decrease by a mechanism that we don't know exactly, but decrease EWS fly activity leading to uh, potentially metastasis. And, and there are no, some also antagonism that, that may be very important for EWS fly uh, activity like Quint or, or EPO. Then what, what is the role of STAC2? So as I told you, STAC2 is the most frequent uh, uh, genetic abnormality in Ewing sarcoma, and uh, Didier Surde, a, a postdoc in, in the lab, did a lot of work on, with IC, uh, iChip, uh, to, to look at what STAC2 mutation inactivation uh, may, may do in Ewing sarcoma. STAC2 mutation is a prognostic factor in Ewing sarcoma, so uh, tumors with a, a mutation inactivating mutation of STAC2 uh, uh, are of bad uh, prognosis. And since STAC2 is a member of the cohesin complex, which is very important for creating this loop in the, in the, in, in the DNA, uh, Didier did, did a lot of 3D analysis of, of, uh, of the genome. And just to, to keep a, a quite long story shorter, at least, what, what he showed is that looking at promoter-enhancer interaction uh, with uh, i chip with k twenty seven acetylated uh, uh, antibody, it could show that when you inhibit uh, stack two in isogenic uh, Ewing cells with CRISPR Cas nine induced Cas two snack stack two deletion, you have a decrease of the prom uh, uh, enhancer promoters interactions, and that if you re-express stack two, you can rescue. Uh, this uh, uh, promoter and answer interactions. Leading to, to this uh, uh, model is that when you have uh, a mutation of STAC2, somehow you loosen the, 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 the chromosome loop, you loosen the uh, uh, promoter and answer interaction, and therefore you decrease somehow EWS fly activity because those enhancer promoter interactions are essential for EWS fly um, activity. So this is something which is a bit counterintuitive, 
meaning that you have an oncogene, EWS fly, and one of the key genetic, secondary genetic abnormalities, which is, which is observed in Ewing sarcoma, is to decrease somehow the activity of this uh, major oncogene. And this leads to the current model that we have, is that uh, you have mesenchymal stem cell, Ewing cells that can, uh, with plasticity, oscillate between those two states. And what is doing stack 2 is a bit pushing the system on the left toward the mesenchymal not pushing it too strong, cells need to, 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 to still have the ability to proliferate and so on. But we believe that uh, this is sufficient to increase uh, somehow cell migration and potentially to increase metastasis because TAC2 is associated with increased, TAC2 mutation is associated with increased metastasis in, in uh, Ewing sarcoma. And uh, uh, I will now uh, shift gears a, a bit and, and uh, come to my uh, uh, final uh, topic here. Is that what we observe? So, EWS fly is able to activate normal cellular genes by this enhancer promoter interaction through GGAA repeats, leading to complete reprogramming. But <coughs> what uh, Olivier Saunier and um, uh, uh, Julien Weber in the lab also show that in some completely desert region of the, of the genome, intergenic region, there are some GGA repeats, EWS fly is able to bind to those, as shown here, is able to induce K27 acetylated, H, uh, K4 methyl 3 here. If you inhibit EWS fly, you completely lose it. And what happens here is you have, this is RNA-seq, and you have this region that are transcribed. If you, in, if you inhibit EWS fly, this signal completely uh, disappears. So meaning that in, in, in completely desert region, with EWS, EWS fly, you have some kind of creation of your new genes. So this is another example of a neogene that is created by EWS fly. You see exactly the same profile, a GGA repeat, EWS fly binding, uh, activation histone mark, and, and so on. And then when, when you look across TCG, across GTEx, or across normal tissue, what you observe is that the only significant signal that you get is only in Ewing sarcoma. It is not expressed to significant level in any other uh, uh, tumors, and it is not expressed also in any uh, uh, normal tissue. No, extremely highly specific neogenes, which are in fact EWS fly induced long non coding RNA. Uh, another example and a, a way to, to show this is a single cell RNA fish uh, data here. So you have these neogenes in green and a control gene in, uh, in, in, in red. And so you see the two spots of transcription of these new genes here in the, in the nucleus, and all those single RNA molecules all across the cells. And if you inhibit EWS fly by the DOC system I told you about, you completely lose all the six system. So it's completely EWS fly uh, induced. So to summarize a bit of this, so in the parental cell you have cellular genes, gene A, gene B, you have those microsatellite sequences that are completely silent, and upon EWS fly expression, you have both activation of the, some cellular genes through uh, enhancer-promoter interactions, and you have also somehow de novo transcription of some intergenic region of the genome. The, uh, uh, the role of those microsatellites is clearly established by, by kind of CRISPR interference uh, uh, um, uh, experiments where if you target this to uh, a region surrounding the microsatellite, you can almost completely abolish the expression of those neurogenes. <laughs> so, uh, in the end, we ended up with uh, 26 of those highly specific EWS fly gene, and this is a heat map showing EW expression in Ewing sarcoma as compared to TCG, uh, uh, other TCG tumors or, or normal tissues. And then the question uh, emerged is that, okay, these are linked RNA, 
Not sure they may have any specific role in Ewing sarcoma. They are some kind, rather some kind of byproduct of what EWS fly is, is doing. But there are more and more uh, publication showing that this long non-coding RNA may not be as non-coding as in initially thought. And there are many publications on this uh, 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 along the past two or three uh, years saying that those long non-coding RNA may have some uh, coding sequences. And so what, what we did in the lab is uh, uh, to, to, to do a ribosic experiment. You, you alluded to uh, this morning. So for this kind of experiment, what you do is you isolate the, the ribosome, then you digest the RNA that uh, is single cell, is single uh, outside of the, of the ribosome. So you just keep the ribosome protected fragment and then you, you sequence uh, this. And indeed, we could find that at least some of those neogenes are uh, attached to uh, a ribosome. And more importantly, we did some proteomic analysis showing that uh, in, indeed we can detect some, some peptide that are uh, associated with, uh, <laughs> with those uh, uh, ribosomes. So these are highly Ewing specific proteins somehow. And obviously, came the idea that this could lead to interesting immunotherapy approaches based on, on, on this. And what we are doing uh, now, and we'll, I will be quick on this, is, is to do some uh, immunopeptidomics, looking whether some peptide corresponding to these proteins are attached, uh, uh, exposed in the context of uh, class one. And indeed, we can find some peptide that are attached at the membrane. And presently, we are looking at specific T cells that could be able to recognize those peptides and potentially to attack and kill uh, the Ewing cells. So we believe they are a good uh, candidate for immunotherapy. Uh, um, rapidly, to finish, because I see some people standing, <laughs> ready to aggress me. No. <laughs> uh, so I, I, told, I, I began with this picture of uh, circles showing many, many different translocations. Many of those translocations lead to a, a fusion transcription factor, a chimeric transcription factor. And interesting, we did the same kind of uh, analysis for, for tumors of this type. And indeed, in each case, those transcription factors may have neomorphic uh, 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 properties and can indeed lead to this kind of neogenes formation. And you see that for each of those tumors, shown in the X uh, axis, you have some very specific neogenes that are uh, expressed. And uh, I think it's time to conclude, if I understood correctly some signs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it, just to conclude with where we are now and what, what are the potential therapeutic opportunities for, for Ewing sarcoma. So, there is a lot of work being done on EWS fly stability. Because if you could completely degrade EWS fly with protac or molecular glues, it could be something very important. There have been a lot of work on EWS fly downstream event, uh, because EWS fly activates the IGF-1 pathway, activates some pathway. So it was initially expected that by blocking those downstream pathway, we may have clue for the treatment. But in fact, those cells are so plastic that if you block somewhere downstream, the cell will fi find the way to escape uh, this, probably linked to the ability of EWS fly to bind really those different microsatellite regions. Um, the, 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 the modulation of the epigenome also, EWS fly do not act alone, it needs some uh, uh, complices to, to, to do its uh, job, la, la, la. and um, there are a lot of work on, on these inhibitors. And uh, I will end up with this uh, uh, potential immunotherapy uh, that we are working hard uh, on with these neogenes that could lead to something very specific for Ewing sarcoma. And with this, I will thank my collaborators. And as you may see, there has been a gender shift in the lab. 
So these are the, uh, the, the precursor, the, the, the guys that uh, Didier for the stack two, uh, uh, Georges Alain for the plasticity of Ewing sarcoma, and, and now we have a, a fantastic women that took over on, on, on all those uh, uh, projects. And I thank you very much for your attention.